Hello everybody, uh, let us see today the main technique of making the fabrics that is weaving. Combination of fibers and yarns, we can make a plain and uh, also a pliable structure called a fabric. So, these fabrics are made for different purposes, maybe for apparel, home textiles and also industrial purpose. These fabrics are either made from the fibers and yarns or it is also made from the solution itself or by combination of different fabrics we will be able to get new fabrics. Among the many techniques of producing fabrics, weaving still stands first because two thirds of the world production is due to weaving. Weaving is an old art known to primitive man even before spinning. He may have seen the birds, the nests and also the twigs and the you know bushes in the forest and he learned the art of uh, weaving. It was so crude in the beginning and but as the age goes on and the people have started using a different uh, small tools in order to bring about this kind of weaving. Today the loom that is available in uh, that was only introduced in 18th century and uh, till then the weaving process was very very slow. After 18th century it has taken up the speed and now two thirds of the production in the world are being produced by weaving. And weaving is a process of interlacing two sets of yarns. One yarn will be going over and under another yarn in order to make an interlacement. These two sets of yarns called as warp yarns, warp yarns which are run along the length of the fabric. You now these are also called ends other set of yarns which run right angle to the uh, length of the fabric they are called as weft yarns or woof yarns or even called as picks. But in the industry the ends and picks uh, these are the two terms that are being used. Interlacement, interlacement is a point where the one yarn crosses over the other and goes underneath or comes over onto the surface and it is vice versa. When the fabric has more interlacements and also when the fabric has more number of warp and weft, it uh, contributes to serviceability. And the ratio of between these two should also be uh, balanced to get much more good fabrics which can give more service to the consumer. The fabrics have you know self edges on either side. When you measure it along the self edges and it is the length of the fabric and the fabric that spread between the two self edges you know it is called as a width of the fabric. Parts of a loom. A loom whether it is simple or a complicated will have I mean around five parts which are essentially to be there in order to bring the interlacement among the yarns and thus weaving takes place. And these five parts are bob beam, cloth beam, harness, reed and a shuttle. So, these are all very very important and the first one is the warp beam. Warp beam is a huge cylinder, it contains the warp yarns and depending upon the width of the fabric, the warp beam is also as wider as possible and the yarns which are sized and placed one after the other on the warp beam is placed at the back of the loom. Warp yarns are again spread onto another beam which is called as a cloth beam. Yarns are wound on uh, both the cloth beam and also the bob beam. When the cloth is being made, the cloth will come onto the cloth beam and uh, the bob uh, yarns also will be released from the bob beam. These are the two uh, important uh, cylinders that are placed, one in the front and one at the back having the bob yarns over and these bob yarns are at tension while it is being done. Coming to the other part which is very important here is the harness. Harness is something like a frame, you know it contains uh, several heddles, uh, small needle like uh, things which spread over the frame, maybe they are, these are mobile and containing a you know, eye in the center that means a, a space in the center in order to uh, take the warp yarn through. This is required because uh, when interlacement has to take place certain number of yarns have to be raised and certain number of yarns sh should be there underneath. Uh, when the yarn passes between these two and thus interlacement takes place. And it facilitates actually the raising of maybe an alternative warp yarns so that 
the weft can be inserted through another one is a uh, reed and which is also like a frame it contains fine thin wires and also they are immobile and they are firm they are vertical the yarns are again through the harness they will be taken the bob yarns and then again they pass through the space between the two wires of the frame space is called a dent the space dent how much it should be depends upon the fineness or the thickness of the yarn that is being used the reed should be different for different counts and different sizes of the yarn the main purpose of this particular reed is to batten actually to bring the weft yarn after it is inserted onto the cloth so that compactness of the uh, fabric is possible final uh, part of the loom is the shuttle which is also an important one and which is something like a boat shaped it is usually made out of uh, wood and it carries the weft yarn and it has a slit or it has a small uh, vertical structure on which a bobbin can be inserted and also when it is kept inside when it can be moved inside and then kept it and then there will be a small hole present in the uh, at the beginning of this particular uh, shuttle and which will allow the weft yarn to pass through so while uh, the weaving takes place harness is raised and then shuttle goes from one end of the fabric to the other end carrying the weft yarn this is the main purpose of this particular reed so by operating all these parts weaving will take place essential operations in weaving there are essential operations in weaving and uh, they have to be uh, done in sequence so that the fabric is being made and one is the shedding here some warp yarns have to be raised and the other warp yarns have to be lowered in order to facilitate the insertion of the weft yarn when uh, few warp yarns are raised and few warp yarns are taken down depending upon the design again and the weft is inserted so the place in between these two is called a shed and this operation is called as shedding the second operation which is also very important is the picking picking facilitates again the insertion of the weft yarn or the pick you know maybe probably this is called picking because earlier to the invention of loom they used to do the insertion with the help of hand by taking one uh, a small uh, wooden uh, piece they used to take the weft and take it over and under, under the uh, actually warp yarns one one over and one under one over one under like that with the hand they used to take it and so they used to call it as picking and so the probably the name has come from the uh, that particular operation so picking actually completes the insertion of the weft yarn into the shed the next one is that uh, battening then the next step should be take the weft yarn onto the fabric which is already made and so what happens is this particular uh, pick is battened with the help of the reed when once the pick is placed the reed will uh, be pushed onto the cloth uh, the particular pick will be placed so that compact construction is possible otherwise it is impossible to produce compact fabrics unless there is a battening and the next one is that uh, taking up and letting off in this what happens is the fabric which is already made will be taken up by the cloth beam it is wound around the cloth beam and then to the, that certain extent the distance should be maintained between the two warp beam and the cloth beam so warp beam will release the warp yarns from there and so thus you know there will be a proper tension that is being uh, uh, inserted in these things in order to uh, facilitate again the picking so this way all these uh, operations were done in sequence and thus the fabric is being made and so till the warp yarns on the warp beam which are wound on the warp beam are over you know this these four operations will continue so the length of the fabric depends upon the length of the yarn that is present on the warp beam characteristics of woven fabrics woven fabrics are characterized by the presence of two sets of yarns the warp and the weft and these warp and weft are interlaced to produce fabrics of different designs using different uh, harnesses and different kinds of threads and different kinds of colors and all more number of fabrics can be uh, prepared uh, and thus you know the fabric will have uh, a few characteristics here one is that it has two sets at least warp and weft and there are interlacement points 
and also there will be a self edge coming on either side of the woven fabric and there will be a grain for this fabric and also the proportion of the warp and weft should be always balanced and uh, the count of the fabric should always be uh, high so that the fabric will be more durable. Sometimes you know the interlacement points will not be there. Interlacement is a point where the yarn crosses over the other and change its position from underneath to surface or surface to underneath depending upon the design. So, when the interlacement points are so many, it will not facilitate for more compactness in the weave. But when uh, the interlacement points are missed out at some points, it will facilitate push more number of yarns into a small space. And when a particular yarn misses one interlacement and goes along little bit till this next interlacement, the particular part of the yarn is called as the float. Whenever uh, smoother garments are required, smoother fabrics are required, then they go for these floats. More number of floats will not bring in a uh, very highly serviceable fabric. If the number of uh, interlacements are more, usually the fabrics are more serviceable. But again depends upon the number of uh, yarns, both warp and weft present in the material as well as the balance between the two. There are differences between the warp and weft. You know, warp yarns are always stronger and usually the fibers are longer in that and also they are made with a higher twist when compared to uh, the weft yarns because they have to be on the loom while the fabric is being made. Whereas, weft yarns will need to be only inserted and they will be in place and they will be worn on the cloth beam and so they do not require much strength during the weaving process. And sometimes maybe ply yarns are being used in this in order to make it more stronger and weft yarns uh, usually can be either the thick yarns can be used or even uh, the yarns with a low twist can be used or even novelty yarns can also be used in order to bring about variety in the fabrics. Whenever we see something new in the fabric like a novelty yarn and all, they, these are present only the direction of the weft and not due to, uh, in the direction of the warp. And so, there are few differences which uh, a consumer may not be able to just see which side is the warp and which side is the weft. In a selvage is present, definitely we can say that uh, the yarns that are running towards uh, this uh, parallel to the selvage or the warp yarns. But if the selvage is not there, what are we going to do? We can just ravel out few yarns and see if the yarns you know uh, have uh, more crimp in that it is supposed to be the weft yarn. If the crimp is less, then it is the warp yarn. When uh, you also stretch and see, if the stretch is more, it is the weft yarn. If the stretch is less, again it is the warp yarn. And like that you know there are some certain differences, novelty yarns are only present in this and also certain fabrics like satin, satin fabric it always contains only warp floats. So, wherever the smoothness is there that side of the uh, direction of the fabric is the warp side and the uh, direction where that much smoothness is not there it is going to be the weft side or even poplins, poplin fabrics have a thicker weft when compared to the warp like that by the name of the fabric also we will be able to identify the warp and the weft. This is very very important especially for the dressmaker because he has to uh, take the advantage of the positions of the fabric while cutting and so that he can make a really adorable garment. Coming to the other characteristics of the woven fabric, selvage. The fabric is characterized by having two edges on a either side of the fabric. So, they are present on the uh, sides of the fabric and uh, these self edges are nothing but the self edge of the fabric. These edges are formed when the weft yarn is taken from one side of the fabric to the other and also it is taken around over there and it bends over there and it comes to the other side and usually uh, the fabric uh, will be more dense at that particular point. The warp yarns are placed uh, more in number at those two places so that the fabric has more strength. Otherwise, you know if you just uh, uh, pull it, it uh, will tear and so the fabric has the self edge and which will uh, actually protect the fabric from uh, any kind of distortions. And these self edges or selvages are of different types. You know you find them a plain self edges which are seen on the dress materials and all. They are narrow ones and usually uh, made with the plain weave. And but you know the number of yarns at that particular point are more when compared to the uh, body of the fabric. These 
are very very simple just like the other uh, plain weave they are present and they are only to protect the fabric. But uh, when you go to the other fabrics like towels, sheeting materials wherein the edge is uh, little you know, more more than this maybe half inch around and uh, it contains particular uh, basket weave whichever weave is used in the center in the body of the fabric uh, basket weave is being used and it is called as the tape edge tape edge will be very flat you know and also it is firm and uh, it is pliable and so sheeting materials and all appliable uh, selvage is required and so the uh, these fabrics are uh, finished with the tape selvages split edges are also made when the fabrics are narrow so to observe the economy sometimes these two narrow fabrics are being produced at the same time and then they are cut in the center and then it is finished with some interlocking and uh, some fabrics like ribbons and all where the fabrics are thermoplastic sometimes they have the fused edges this is that you know the fabric is made in the beginning wider fabric is made and then it is cut uh, into the width required like a ribbon the cutting edges or the knives will have the uh, higher temperature and thus they while cutting they also fuse the particular edges and the very narrow selvages are present and even for uh, split selvages also are not uh, very broader they are very very narrow these selvages are characteristic of uh, the fabric when the fabric the length is has to be measured along the selvages and then coming to the grain and grain is another characteristic of this uh, woven fabrics and this grain is nothing but the position of the warp and the weft yarns in the fabric when the warp and weft are exactly right angle to each other then the fabric is going to be a stronger fabric but what happens is during the finishing process these warp and weft run little off uh, direction and not exactly in the same direction then uh, this will be a problem in uh, use the consumer finds this very difficult to actually straighten it if it is a cotton fabric it can be just uh, uh, you know with the help of water you can dampen it and then bring it back to uh, original uh, uh, you know position but whereas in the synthetic fabrics if it is done and it, it cannot be actually finished anymore any in any way you cannot straighten it and you have to throw that material and so the grain of the fabric is very very important because the main purpose of making some of these fabrics are for making the garments there are also terms used as lengthwise grain crosswise grain bias and also garment bias so lengthwise grain means when the fabric is cut along the selvages when it is parallel to that then it is called lengthwise grain and when it is made right angle to the selvage then it is called cross grain and bias is actually the diagonal of a perfect square this is uh, a true bias and uh, it also has lot of stretch you now the fabric can be stretched very well and whereas if you take the stretch of the yarns into consideration and uh, actually this uh, warp yarns uh, are stretch less whereas weft yarns uh, stretch little more but among the, all these things only the bias stretches more whenever there are curves and other things in the garments bias need to be used and in order to finish those things and garment bias is a position between the warp uh, and the bias or weft and the bias and so this garment bias is not having that much of uh, the stretch that is there in the true bias and so sometimes when the necklines and other things are finished with the garment bias and you can find that there are creases and all so the grain is an important aspect of these fabrics thread count of the fabric this thread count should not be uh, you know confused with the yarn count of the fabric because yarn count only talks about the size or the fineness of the yarn whereas thread count is the proportion of the warp and weft present in a defined space in a defined uh, measurement of 1 inch and so thread count is usually uh, defined as the number of threads the number of warp and weft threads present in 1 square inch of a gray fabric when the thread count is more the fabric is going to be very durable when thread count is less then it is not going to be that much durable when the fabric is intended for apparel maybe you need a stronger fabric but if it is made for the industry you need a fabric which is much more stronger depending upon the end use for which the fabric is made you know the thread count also differs if you have thicker yarns only it is possible to get uh, lesser thread count and whereas if finer yarns are used it is possible to have more thread count 
usually when the thread count is expressed as 100 by 100 that shows that the first digit always stands for the uh, in the warp and the second one will stand for the weft so usually uh, 80 by 80 is used for the dress materials 100 by 100 or 120 by 100 or 80 by 100 or these used for the sari materials and sheeting materials bed sheets and uh, thicker blankets you may have even 40 by 40 to measure the thread count you know we need a small device like you have to magnify it and see uh, whether the how many number of yarns are present and uh, there is a possibility of uh, using a non destructive or a destructive test also one is you know the use of a small uh, pick glass we call it as a pick glass uh, which contains a magnifying glass on the top and having a, a small strand and a frame of one fourth inch or half inch or one inch these are available in these uh, uh, three uh, uh, capacities when it is placed flat on the fabric over that and through the magnifying glass we will be able to see how many number of warp yarns are present in this and how many weft number of uh, yarns are present in this. and we can record the thread count of the material so this is a non destructive test another way of uh, actually measuring is it is to cut away correct uh, correctly one square inch of the fabric and then raveling out one side of yarns and then recording it and then taking out the other yarns and counting the them so either warp and weft can be removed first because weft is easier to remove so they are raveled out weft is raveled out leaving uh, few of the uh, warp yarns over there and then uh, the counting can be easily done so with with or without the pick glass we will be able to take the thread count of the material balance of the cloth the proportion of the warp and weft within a square inch of the fabric and records the balance of the fabric. Balance need to be there in between the number of warp yarns and weft yarns. Otherwise, the fabric when it is made in the form of a garment, it slips at the seams and also uh, it will not be durable while you use the material because it uh, slits in between and thus it shows the other color of the warp and thus it becomes unsightly when it is made in the form of a garment and so a balance of usually 100 by 100 or 60 by 60 or 80 by 80 is considered to be a very good balance or a difference of 10 in between these two the difference of uh, 10 or 15 depending upon the uh, number of threads that are present is considered to be a good balance if it is more than that you know then it is considered as a poor balance but the number of uh, threads used in this in the weft should always be you know according to the number of warp yarns that are being used and not uh, very low when compared to the warp even though warp yarns are stronger and we do not require weft yarns to be that stronger. So, but there should be a balance between the two sets of yarns so that a fabric of a firm nature can be made. The fabrics are wider, some fabrics are narrower and some fabrics are very much wider and depending upon the end use the distance between the two is considered to be the two selvages is considered to be the width of the fabric dress materials have around 36 inches or 90 centimeters wool or silk materials you know these are all made with a wider uh, width um, say more than 40 40 46 inches 52 inches and like that and sheeting materials are uh, usually made more than 60 and uh, even nowadays we are getting uh, and double bed sheets and other things which are even having higher width than the ordinary fabrics and sari is more than uh, 1 meter 1.25 meters of width it contains and so that persons of any height can be uh, can bear this particular fabrics so it depends upon the end use for which it is made uh, the width should be uniform throughout the fabric and if the width of the fabric is not uniform particular fabric will not be certified for making into garments preparation of yarns for weaving warp and weft yarns are required uh, for weaving you know maybe minimum of two sets are required maybe for complex weaves and all we may need one more set or two more set or some yarns which are inserted in between also but for a simple fabric to be made we require two sets of yarns warp and the weft and the, how these to be prepared they are to be prepared for making them into warp yarns or for making them into weft yarns. 
more processing is required for vapions rather than the weftions because vapions uh, will be there uh, while weaving between the warp beam and the cloth beam and they have to also withstand the stress of weaving because the harnesses go up and down and uh, taking the vapions uh, up and down so that you know the insertion of the picking takes place and so they uh, they will be undergo a lot of uh, stress during the weaving process and so they have to be made stronger and so for facilitating this there are few operations which are very very simple but uh, the warp yarn is supposed to go through these operations fine before it is uh, placed on the loom one is that is pulling the yarn which is intended for the warp is uh, brought from the spinning mill and then it is wound on big spools it is called as pulling and these spools are placed on a rack which is called as a creel so they place all these things on the rack and say for example if the fabric has 5000 or 6000 warp yarns then in that case you have all the 6000 spools are placed on this rack now that is called creeling and then after creeling the yarn from each spool is made to pass to come over the warp beam and then they are made to wind around the warp beam so this is called as warping and uh, the final one is the uh, slashing also called sizing because it has to withstand the stress uh, they are given a starch finish which is also called a slashing here and this is nothing but giving a starch finish to the material or a stiffening finish to the warp yarns especially and uh, th these yarns are passed through a padding machine where a trough of uh, starch or some other material may be there sometimes if it is a synthetic material maybe polyvinyl alcohols and other things are present or if it is a cotton material and all may contain only the starch and maybe few additives in order to help in weaving and handle and other things and the weft yarns do not require much processing because uh, they do not uh, undergo any kind of stress during the weaving process they are only inserted and then battened and so Uh, these uh, weft yarns which are taken from the spools they are wound around uh, small bobbins and the size of the bobbin depends upon the shuttle size so they are to be placed in the shuttle and so the, the yarn is wound around this particular uh, a bamboo shoot or something like that and then these bobbins are being made these operations are done manually in the handloom industry without the use of any uh, equipment uh, or any tools and uh, but nowadays make this process shorter and uh, uh, quicker all the pockets of uh, handlooms have the uh, you know warping machine and also the sizing machine so these pockets are given so that the, all these handloom weavers they come they bring their material over there and then they get it warped and the warp beam is thus prepared and then uh, it is also slashed to uh, give uh, the starch coating and then they dry it and then take it